Welcome to the Evax by Potter's training video on the HMX configuration form. If installing an HMX system, you can find the HMX form by contacting your local sales representative. When opening the HMX form, you may notice that there are various tabs within the form itself. However, there are only three tabs that need to be filled out. The first tab, which is System Operation, tells us about where the system is going to be located and what all the system is going to entail. The second tab will be the master panel switches. And the third tab that needs to be filled out is for the distributed panels. The HMX form needs to be completed prior to ordering your voice panel. This form is used to allow the factory to fully configure and program your voice control panel so that way all you need to do is terminate cabling in the field. For today's training, I will be using a completed HMX form for training purposes only. The first information is typical information such as where the panel is to be located and job or purchase order information. Option A, System Operation, choosing a single channel or dual channel operation. People often confuse multiple messages with multiple channels. Both single and dual channel systems are capable of sounding multiple messages. The difference is single channel can only sound one message at a time while dual channel systems provide the ability to sound two different messages simultaneously. Dual channels are most often utilized in high-rise buildings when there is a requirement to sound an evacuation message on certain floors while a different alert message sounds throughout the remaining floors. In this section, the wiring style and voltage for the speaker circuits is defined. Class B speaker circuits consist of two wires with an end of line resistor which is installed at the last speaker. Class A speaker circuits require the circuit to return back to the distributed panel after the last speaker. Class AB speaker schemes are only selected when there is a requirement for every other speaker that is installed to be on a different circuit. After determining the wire scheme for the circuit, you will need to choose whether it will be a 25 volt or 70 volt circuit. Firefighter phones are optional. If your system includes fire phones, then select yes. Please note though that while up to five phones can operate simultaneously on a single phone circuit, party line service is not available. Communication style is the section where the style of network wiring installed between the master and distributed panels is selected. This network wiring, referred to as the NETCOM loop, starts at the master panel extends to each distributed panel and must return back to the master panel. The Style 4 wiring scheme requires a twisted pair or two conductor for this loop, while Style 7 includes redundant wiring and requires two twisted pair or four conductors. The next section is to choose whether the primary power will be 120 volt AC or 220 volt AC. Typically within the United States you will choose 120 volt AC. Alarm operation. This defines how the system should operate in an alarm condition. General alarm means that all speaker circuits or zones will activate simultaneously. By zone selection indicates that the fire alarm panel will provide contact closures to the control which the speaker circuit should activate. The remainder of the options would be selected when speaker circuits of specific floors of a building should activate. For example, floor above, floor below means that the floor where the alarm occurred the floor above where the alarm occurred and the floor below are the only floors that should sound the evacuation message. It should be noted that only one mode of alarm operation should be selected. Alarm input. In this section we specify how the HMX system is intended to interface with the fire alarm control panel. Bell circuit only indicates a NAC circuit from the fire alarm panel will be used to trigger the HMX voice panel to signal a general alarm condition. Bell circuit with contact by zone selection can be used to indicate the floor where the alarm event occurred and requires both a NAC circuit from the fire alarm control panel and a programmable relay contact closure. You can also choose contact closure only or you can choose fire alarm control panel interface. In order to use the fire alarm control panel interface you will need to verify that the fire alarm control panel you are installing is compatible for this mode of operation with the HMX panel by EVAX. And much like the alarm operation selection, you can only choose one alarm input. 
Unless a custom message or specific tone is specified, a default message or tone will be used. If a message or tone different than the default is desired, please contact your local sales representative. If a dual channel is being utilized, you may choose to have an alert tone and or a message. Please remember as it states on the form that it is defaulted to use a chime tone and no message. Item J, Backup Amplification. Either choose yes or no if you would like backup amplification for each primary amplifier on the system. If you choose yes, you will need to order an EVX-BA100 card for each primary amplifier on the system. System notes, this is where you can put specific notes regarding your EVAX panel. This could include items such as projected install date or possibly the type of speaker to be installed on the system. Item L, standby battery requirements. The hours of the standby are typically defaulted to 24 hours and 15 minutes of alarm time. If you choose to change this, you can do this here in this section. Also note that the master panel and distributed panel battery calculation worksheets are also a part of this form. Input points. This is where the fire alarm control panel interfaces with the EVAX voice panel telling it how to operate or what needs to be activated. You will need to list all input points that will trigger the EVAX similar to what is shown on the screen. Remember that this is just an example and your configuration will vary. If you remember earlier in the form, we chose to operate with a floor above, floor below operation. So looking at these input points, if there was an alarm on the fourth floor of this building, it would also play the evacuation message on the floors 3 and 5. One thing to note about Section M is you do not need to fill this out if you are using a fire alarm control panel interface. Now moving on to the tab that is labeled MP switches. The purpose of this sheet is to determine how you would like the master panel switches to be labeled. It is recommended that you separate paging switches from fire phone circuits from specialty function switches. It is also recommended that you label each switch with its function. You will now see a completed diagram on your screen. On this completed diagram, you will notice for the Bank 1 switches, we have kept that to just speaker circuits. And then for the Bank 2 switches, this is what we have used for our firefighter phone circuits. This is a common method or common way of completing your switches in each bank. Most applications would include a switch assigned to either a single speaker circuit or a group of circuits to allow zoned or selective paging to specific floors or areas of a building. For fire phone systems, a switch is required for each fire phone circuit. Now moving forward with the tab that is labeled Distributed Panel. Starting with the top of the sheet, you will choose whether the distributed panels are mounted together or on separate floors. This sheet is divided into two sections. On the left side of the sheet, you will have the speaker circuits, and on the right side of the sheet, you will have the firefighter phone circuits. If you are not using firefighter phones, then you will not need to fill out any information on the right side of the sheet. Be sure to label the model and location of each distributed panel. Also, make sure you map each speaker circuit and phone circuit to its related master panel switch. Provide a description for each circuit and be sure to add up the total for each speaker circuit to ensure you are not maxing out that speaker circuit. For any system that requires more than four phone circuits, you will need to add an MX-FPI plus an MX-FPO per additional four phone circuits. You will add this in the option cards line located here. This concludes the video training on the HMX configuration form. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact EVAX by Potter at the telephone number shown on your screen.